One of my basic rules I train people on is control your environment. Always control your environment. And if you're an MC, your environment is mainly the people in the room. Absolutely. Your job will suck. You will have a terrible experience as the MC. The audience will not have any fun if you let the environment be what it's going to be. Because they walk in with their own problems, their own hopes, their dreams. Whatever happened in the morning, they have to clear that aside to be present in that room. Mm. And that's your job as the MC is to say, how do I get their attention and get them present? I have to change their state from wherever they were before to wherever they are now. And it typically comes through some movement, some body stuff. So I get them up, I get them moving, get them cheering. And the practice, because I want them to welcome speakers a certain way. Right. So you got to you got to practice it. It's that conditioned response because, like you said, by speaker two or speaker three, they know what's going to happen. They stand up, Do and then it. and then day two they forget because human beings are like goldfish. Our brains reset every twenty seven minutes. Welcome to the Who You Know Show, where what you know is important, but. Who you know can make all the difference in your business, career, relationships, and life. We're here today at Video Marketing World, and this episode is brought to you by Real News PR, all things lights, camera, action. They're going to make you look like a million bucks. Speaking of a million bucks, I got a guy here, Jesse Zagorski. And let me tell you, this man, he's an MC, and not only is he a professional MC, he's Video Marketing World's superstar he's actually my replacement from <laughs> last year they fired me they got rid of me so quick and hired the real deal holyfield right here in front of me and uh jesse's also a trainer and coach an organizational builder in the real estate industry and so i'm super excited to have you here to get to learn from a real master jedi mc Welcome to the stage. Now, now you're cracking me up, man. I, I, I thought maybe we were going to start like a beef, like a rumble. You're like, so, yeah. so by the way, now that you're on camera. Yeah, you suck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's so cool. But um, so, no, last year I was invited. Scott invited me to, to MC, and uh, I was terrified. Never done that before. But uh, I immediately just said yes because I know that. Because you say uh, yes because that's what you do. Well, that's what you, you just do. say yes. An, indica- uh, an invitation is an indication of a qualification, right? So he invited me. I knew that, hey, he saw something in me that I didn't know what I saw, so let's go. Yep, that's it. Right? And, uh, and apparently it went well enough that I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to rub it in. but They we'll- were like, we'll actually pay someone next year because you suck. No, but it's cool. I'll stick to podcasting, and you can do the MC well, thing. And, and you do a fantastic job of podcasting. I, I've watched you. I just got to say, I, I'm sure you're going somewhere with this, but... I've watched you over the last two days just interviewing person after person. First of all, the setup that we're sitting in here right now yeah. blew my mind, dude. You guys set it up in like 30 minutes. It was like, boom, boom. Done. And suddenly there was like lights, cameras, and podcasts. And I've just watched you just like hanging yeah. out, just shooting it. It's been so well, cool. it's so much fun. And I got to give the credit where the credit's due because uh, I don't know all how to set all this crap up. You know, these, these guys at Real News PR, they make me look like a million bucks. That's what they do. Okay, well, then they are geniuses. Because truly, like, truly, I don't know how they set this up so fast. It was just like, and it looks so good. They really are geniuses. Uh, they've got a guy over there, Wyme. Uh, this guy builds all a lot of their studios, and um, he's just freaking phenomenal. He's the talent. I mean, they're they're all super talented. Every one of them. Matter of fact, our producer behind the scenes is named Ziggy. Shout out Ziggy. Uh, the the he's just amazing too. So we just want to give extra love and support to all of those folks over there at Real News. Now. I want to dive into your story, though. Uh, you're a trainer and coach uh, in the real estate industry, and you said something last night. We were doing a little mastermind, and you were there, and you said something about how you've got a team, and uh, you're, you're making a little bit. You're making a little bit of residual income, a little bit of cash flow uh, from your team in this business. And so I, I won't go too into, into the details unless you want to share, but it was quite a lot. I was impressed. I was like, wow, this guy's really crushing it in the real estate industry. So talk to me about that. How did that get started and how long have you been doing that? So I've been in real estate for 18 years and my business partner my entire career has been my mom. So I'm a, what? I'm a certified mama's boy. Like Whoa, I, yeah. mic drop. Let's go. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm a mama's boy. And uh, we, we ran our own brokerage. We, you know, I was a sales trainer. I've been, a, I've been an agent, like normal buyer seller stuff. But um, over the years... I just developed a skill set for training agents, and then I fell into a platform which is called EXP Realty, and I started mm. to be able to use my talents to train agents and recruit the people in, and yes. uh, basically became an organization builder. So instead of doing everything myself, using a little bit of leverage, which is something I've been obsessed with probably my entire adult life, and we can talk about living in Thailand and leverage that it took to do that. You don't even know that yet. Wow, I don't know anything about you. Yeah, dude, I took a year off life. 
I didn't carry a cell phone for an entire year. Dude. I came back with more money than I left with. And oh. I, and I lived in Thailand for a year. Dude, so let's go. Okay. Let's roll, man. Right, so, Forget so, this. Let's turn the cameras <laughs> off. Turn all the, you know, let's go to, let's go. No, um, so EXP? EXP. So, so I, so I. They have a model there. They, they have a model, yeah. And without going into sales pitch mode, but it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really, it's changing the real estate industry. No, actually, EXP is one of our partners. Um, oh, cool. Shout out to uh, Elena Cardone. I'm yeah. sure you know her, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, Elena and Grant have both been on the show, and uh, so yeah, they're one of the partners of the so, Who You Know show. So, th so then your, your listeners know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, if they absolutely. haven't, they can go check out those episodes. But it's it's a way for uh, it's a way to put some leverage into the real estate industry mm. for agents. And so I dove into that three and a half years ago and started just uh, you know I personally brought in 39 agents that turned into a group of 1,100 agents. Holy so, smokes. So I own a brokerage. I'm putting it in quotes in case someone's listening to the podcast only, right? right. Watch the video. We're, we're pretty we're pretty fun looking. Anyway, <laughs> um, quotes. Well, actually, hold on. To side sidebar to that. Yep. If you're listening to the podcast and maybe you're on like Apple and you're on one of these other, you know, you, go, go to Spotify. Guess what? They got video podcasts. <laughs> so you can watch and listen. Right? Good like plug. That? Absolutely. Anyway, go I, ahead. I love the time. You're a pro. You're a total <laughs> pro. So, so, so here's the thing. Um, I say brokerage. I own a brokerage of 1,100 agents. I used to own a real brokerage in San Diego of 41 agents. Mm. I had way higher expenses. I didn't sleep much. I had all sorts of phone calls and texts at all hours of the night. I now have 1,100 agents in my organization. It's legally not a brokerage, but I get paid the same way a broker does. I make way more money now. I take every Friday off. I work no nights, no weekends. I hang with my kids, pick them up from school most days of the week. I mean, dude, it's, it's I li you, life by design. You you have it. You got a maiden shade sipping lemonade, man. That's all yeah. I'm saying. No, seriously, because uh, I heard you talking last night, and uh, and I was like, wow, okay, that's pretty pretty interesting. So, because I'm in financial services, you're in in, in real estate business. So, I, I have some questions specifically, yeah. if that's okay. Absolutely. So, in uh, in the real estate industry. How much is there? Is there a lot of regulation, red tape? Is there any kind of uh, compliance? Is it like hard to market? Because I see um, real estate agents. If, if if I understand, it looks like they're pretty pretty fluid and they can market and they can do a lot of stuff. Is there yes. any any red tape? Any handcuffs? Not in the same way that you have in financial services. Okay. Financial services is way more highly regulated because there's so much more potential for for scam and frauds. So real right. estate, there's some potential, but truly the biggest challenge with working with a realtor is just having someone who's a dumb dumb. Oh, like, like, okay. Because it's really easy to get a license. Let's face it, like anyone can yeah. have a license. And so, but other than that, and I'm making a joke, but like, you know, there's lots of great realtors, and lots mm. of not so great realtors. So I would imagine, I would imagine mortgage though maybe more mortgage regulation, is far more highly regulated because it's money. Correct. <laughs> Re Realtors have some regulations around licensing and more fair housing, like dis anti-discriminatory laws, things like that. Oh, okay. that you have. Yeah, but sure. in terms of advertising as an agent, there really isn't as much regulation, especially on the recruitment or attraction side. There really isn't much, as long as you're being legal and ethical, and you're not promising like, hey, come join my company, I'll give you a pony. And then you don't mm. give them a pony, you get really, really frustrated realtors. <laughs> never, never promise never ponies. Never promise ponies. Yeah. I, hey, that's a mic drop. Hey, check it out. We're going to quote that later. Never promise ponies. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> By Jesse Zagorski. Never I love that. Never promise ponies. Never promise ponies. Yeah. That's almost got a little alliteration in it. Never promise ponies. A little bit. I like it. I like it. I'll go with it. I'll go with it. <laughs> so I think the reason why, actually I know the reason why you're a great MC is because of your energy. Thank you. Your energy is through the freaking roof, man. Thank you. Right? And so that's what the MC's job is, is like, zzz, like raise the energy, right? But, but it's so different because being on stage in front of a bunch of people, like now I'm in this chair, I feel very like, now I'm just like relaxed. We're hanging yeah. out. But but I do. I, I was kind of bouncing when I first sat down. Like, oh, well, let's let's go. Yeah. I, I've I've heard you up there on the stage. And uh, yeah, man, you, you got it. 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 You keep going, 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 going. Like the Energizer Bunny. And that's what you got to do. <laughs> you have to really enjoy talking mm. and want to make yourself laugh mm. and you have to as cause people ask me as an MC I've done it for enough years now um, do you get nervous before you go on honestly not at all at, on the MC part I just I know if I'm going to entertain myself if people connect with it great if I don't it's there's not, you can't please everybody right and so if you worry about that I get more nervous when I do an actual because I'm a trainer too when yeah. I'm going to present something that I haven't presented before mm. I'm a musician I'm an actor I do all sorts of stuff sure when I'm doing something I haven't done a thousand times right that makes me nervous got it but being an MC I just get to go up there and be be yeah. hopefully charming yeah and that's what it was for me last year so I hadn't done it before so right. yeah I, it, that I'm going to tell you right now um, haunted me for when I say haunted pre-haunted okay so even before the event for about three or four months of straight, like I lost sleep, 
I thought about it a lot, man. I really did. I was like, I'd never, and, and so I, you know what really got me is I started to connect and speak and uh, build some relationships with some other professional MCs. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was this one guy named Sebastian. I talked with him, and he just did something over the phone, and he was just like improv doing what, what he would do. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I can't do that. I'm like, you're a freaking pro. Like, <laughs> like never, it's, ever, ever go talk to the pro before you go that, do it live because you're, you're just going to screw yourself up. That's why I don't talk to professional MCs. I don't want to know what they really are supposed to do. Dude. I just do what I do. I don't want, I, people always come up to me and they give me tips. They're like, you know what this guy did? And sometimes they're really great ideas. Oh, they were. And I will steal them and make them my own immediately. Yes. Right? Never give credit. Just <laughs> No. The first time, give credit. The second time... Just do it, and the third time, quote yourself. That's the. Mm. I think that's the rule. So for, that's, I think. So I don't know who got it from who. Is it either you got that from Chaz Wilson or he got it from you. Oh, I, I probably got it from Chaz, but yeah. I think he got. He probably got. Maybe <laughs> so that's you who I got it from. You just did it right now. You just <laughs> did it right now. <laughs> no, seriously, because he told me that one time. Because uh, he had a quote that I loved, and I told him I was like, "Dude, I'm totally stealing your quote." And I told him, "I'm like, I'm stealing your quote." Yeah. And it was, uh, you know. You don't need a million followers. Right. Jesus only needed twelve, and I was like, "Dude, that's such a mic drop." I like, I got, I, I like, I told him. I walked up and I was like, "Dude, I'm stealing that." And he's like, "No, here's actually the way you do it." Right. And he gave me that formula that you just gave me right there. I probably got it from him then. <laughs> I could only imagine. So my brain, just so you little learn a little about me, my brain is a sponge yeah. of various things and quotes and things I've learned, and I probably don't have a single original thought in my head, mm. I, and I'm okay with that. But but I'm really good at smushing different thoughts together and coming out with something a little original. Mm. But everything's just a piece of things I've learned. Well, I mean, especially being an MC, you're hearing all these mic drop moments on yeah. stage, and you're hearing people say some some really awesome stuff. Uh, well, let's talk about that real quick. So yeah. at this conference, yep. what has been maybe your most uh, biggest takeaway or that mic drop moment or the aha for you as the MC? Biggest takeaway. So, so I'm, I'm a content creator also. I have like real estate training content. And so I'm sitting in the back taking notes as an, just like I'm an attendee. Mm -hmm. Like as an MC, I'm listening for what are the, what are the emotional high points, the highlights, things I can you know, work into the, 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 the transitions. But as an attendee, I mean, Cody... Did a talk yesterday, Cody, Cody Warner, right? His name rhymes with honor. That's how I remember it. Cause he told me before I went on, he's like, don't screw it up or I'll kill you. No, he, <laughs> didn't, he actually didn't say he's the nicest guy ever, but, um, his talk, he gave 27 tips, 27 hacks on optimizing YouTube by data. Holy smokes. He, did you hear Did you hear? Cody? No, no. Oh, I check didn't. this out. Okay. So, so Cody, Cody is a extreme sport athlete. Oh. Like he let, he's an adrenaline, self-described adrenaline junkie. And his topic title said, 27 data back tips to optimize your YouTube channel. And I'm looking at this going, are you, do you really like, are you highly analytical? And he said, no, not at all. I said, do you like numbers? He said, no, not at all. I said, okay, so what's going on? He said, I love the rush of data. The rush of data. That's exactly what I said. I was like, what? He said, when you really dive into the numbers and the analytics, it does something for you because you can then take that and manipulate and persuade and go someplace new. And he's like, it's just like any extreme sport. I'm like, that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. Hmm. And his presentation was just, if you can get, if anyone listening can get the recordings of the video marketing world, like check out Cody's presentation. It was amazing. And so it was a lot of data points, it, but it wasn't data. It was backed by data, but it backed was more actionable, stra like really easy, actionable strategies, ways to change the hook, the caption, the thumbnail, just really actionable things, but based on, but data backed. Yeah. And, uh, I know they'll be having the recording of this conference guys. You can go check it out. I'm sure on video marketing world.com, yeah. something like that. You can probably find it, but, uh, I know they'll have the recording available, uh, which I'm going to need to check out because I've just been interviewing this whole dang time. I haven't got to see any of the speeches. Did, did ever, seriously, almost not pretty much every one of the speakers blew me away. It was, I mean, Amazing. I love, but I love people. I yeah. love people. I love here. I love presenters. The way they curated this one though, it was like, the level of the content, the level of the speakers, like the, they went so deep, so fast, and there's so much strategy. It was awesome. Well, I liked something that you did uh, as the MC. Okay, I'm going to give you a shout Tell out. Tell me more about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the beginning, you had everyone almost like practice what it's like. Like, you, I think you said something like, imagine if you were coming up on stage, how would you want people to react? So I want them, to, you know, I want you to do the same thing, something like that. And, you know, you call out a name and everybody stands up and cheers like, ah, you know, and so like you kind of get that energy rolling right from the get. Like, so they know the expectation is 
every time you introduce someone, get up, stand up, you know, scream and yell. Yep. And like that keeps the energy, the momentum going throughout the conference. Hundred percent. Can we break human beings down to a really simple concept? I ring up. I, <laughs> sorry. Kind of, no, no, I'm I mean, sorry. I, 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 kind of. I wasn't going there, but but I, that was that was more cynical than I was going. I'm but sorry. That, that's okay. Everybody listening, I didn't just call you sheep. I promise. Sorry, my bad. But, but we are we are herd herd animals. Yeah. I mean, as human beings, we are wired that way, right? To be mm-hmm. herd animals. But I was going more of like I ring a bell and you start to drool. Do you know that experiment, right? Pavlov's dog, he conditioned his dog. It's called conditioning. Mm. You ring a bell, Mm. and every time you rang the bell, he gave the dog food. And he did it over and over again. It didn't take very long. That pretty soon, when you ring that bell, the dog would start to drool because he knew food was coming. Wow. Okay, it's called conditioning. Conditioned response. Wow. Conditioned response. So as an MC, frankly, as a sales professional in anything, one of my basic rules I train people on is control your environment. Always control your environment. And if you're an MC, your environment is mainly the people in the room. Absolutely. Your job will suck. You will have a terrible experience as the MC. The audience will not have any fun if you let the environment be what it's going to be. Because they walk in with their own problems, their own hopes, their dreams. Whatever happened in the morning, they have to clear that aside to be present in that room. Mm. And that's your job as the MC is to say, how do I get their attention and get them present? I have to change their state from wherever they were before to wherever they are now. And it typically comes through some movement, some body stuff. So I get them up, I get them moving, get them cheering. And the practice, because I want them to welcome speakers a certain way. Right. So you got you to gotta practice it. It's that conditioned response because, like you said, by speaker two or speaker three, they know what's going to happen. They stand up. They do and then, it. And then they, too, they forget because human beings are like goldfish. Our brains reset every 27 minutes. So, so you make them do it again on day two. Again. Correct. Yeah. So you just keep conditioning them, keep conditioning them. Correct. I love that. Yeah, and then I go home and I got two little kids and I make them stand up and applaud me when I come home. <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I actually, I don't do that. Oh. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't that's, do that that's, with that's, your kids? No, that's a terrible thing. Actually, oh. my, kids, my kids are four and seven. They probably would do it. My wife would think I was insane, but my kids would do it. <laughs> that's awesome. My, my wife's a therapist, so I, I'm very grateful to be married to a therapist. And that's a whole separate podcast episode. We yeah, I was about to say, what's that like? But we could go down that that's for a while. That's a whole separate episode. Well, here's something that I learned, you know, from last year that... I, Okay, first of all, I overcame my fear of that, right? Because I tell you, it, it, it terrified me. Um, I overcame it. It actually was like a superpower because, like, I, I feel like I could do anything now after do after have done that. Yep. I feel like I could literally do anything. Like keynotes, no problem. Anything else, no problem. Doing this, no problem. Anything like literally, that was the most terrifying thing ever. Yeah. Okay, and I did it. Crushed it. And. I also found out that I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to do that. Not, not but, Which is sometimes more helpful because you work towards a yeah. goal and sometimes you're like, so I'm glad you know now. Well, I didn't ne- never even wanted to do that to begin with. I never like saw my, I wasn't like, ooh, I want to be an MC. I want to be an MC. Never was like that. But he just was like, hey, I want you to MC. So I was right. like, yes. And why? Because it terrify, terrifies me. Right. And if it terrifies me, I have to do it. Yeah. Like, I've kind of like... <laughs> Uh, so so well, what else are you afraid of? Should we break through any other walls while we're here? Man, how much time do we have? Man, I haven't jumped out of a plane yet, but I will okay. tell you this. So, um in scheduling wise it didn't work out, but for whatever reason the uh the army uh invited me to jump out of a plane and I was like, okay. Why? Cuz that's yeah. scary. Yeah. I've never done it. And yeah. Okay, that's going to be scary. So I said yes. Uh, and then I can't remember what happened. There was a process, and I, I probably need to go back and pick that up because I do need to. Do, I need to. I need to do it. And you know, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but since we are recording this, yeah, you realize there's more than one plane you could jump out of, right? Yeah. Like you don't have to wait for the army to go jump out of a plane. Right. You, right. You right. could find other planes. Right, right. That have pilots. Yeah. That would somehow let you open a door, which seems always like an insane thing. Why would you open the door of a perfectly good airplane? Sure. But they would let you do it. Yeah. Well, I. We could look one up now. Yeah. Google it. I got my computer. <laughs> We could go there. We could Let's make just it sign live it on air. We're not live, I guess, but we could on air. Make yeah. It. And um, you can't see it at home, but he is sweating. No, like no, no. See, it doesn't really scare me that okay. much. So okay. here's what I've learned about fear like that is this. Just get in line. Yeah. Okay. Getting in line isn't scary. Like I remember when I was a kid going going uh, Six Flags and you know, going on the roller coaster. The roller coasters are scary. Right. That's why you like them. That's why they're <laughs> fun. They're scary. Okay. But getting in line isn't scary right so i would just get in line uh and then okay so you got to sign up right like you're saying sign up for the freaking thing that's not scary uh 
some of the anticipation right when you get up there. When you get in the plane, you'll feel nervous. When you when you get to the front of the line at the roller coaster right. and you see it and you have to go, and you're like, oh, we're getting close. <laughs> that, that's why you do it for that moment, right? Yeah. Or for what's on the other side of it. Right. But but I, I will say, do you know the book uh, A Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins? I, I haven't read it, but I know, you know the concept. Right? Yes. That, that ties into what you're talking about. Right? Just get in line, right? Pick the smallest possible step to move yourself forward. Count backwards, five, four, three, two, one. Go. And then you do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know what else is good? I do this in the morning sometimes. I'll jump up and uh, just, you know, like you don't want to get out of bed, right? Like yeah. you just like, eh. I will literally, three, two, one, and I will jump, get out of bed, and this, today's going to be a great day, out loud, okay? I love that. And clap your hands, and like, today's going to be a great day. Dude. And like, and you do it like three or four times, and like, today's going to be a great day. Today's going to be a great day. Today's going to be a great day. And it will. I, I promise you. I really love that, and I feel like I've learned something new about you. <coughs> you live by yourself, right? Uh, I don't. No. So tell me more. So tell me more about this <laughs> this person you live with. When you get out of bed and clap your hands, what do they do? Uh, I haven't done it in a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, I get up really early, and my wife's still asleep. And if I got up at four thirty in the morning and did, that, yeah. and did that, not only would would it be look of death, but she would think I was insane. Yeah, she'd I think I lost my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't done it in a while. Uh, and I, what I, what's funny about that is, uh, I do it in my head now, right? Which, which actually interesting side note, Mm -hmm. your brain cannot tell the difference between doing it in your head or doing it in real life. I think there is a difference with the audible though. If you say it out loud, right? It's kind of like, okay, so, uh, the Bible talks a lot about that. It's, um, talks about like, uh, flows through your heart to your mind, out your mouth, and and there's power, hundred percent, right? And so and so when it comes out the mouth and you say it, right? Today's gonna be a great day. Today's gonna be a great day. Today's gonna be a great day. It just does something, right? So a little bit different, but I agree with well, you. Well, and I agree with you, hundred percent. If you have the ability to say it, it out loud, sure. but for people that are like, I can't do that because I I because I would, everyone would hate me. Right. <laughs> the, the, My wife would kill correct. me. Correct. Like, do, yeah. do you know the study about practicing piano that they did? Uh-uh. They took people and they had a group of college kids. They divided them in half. I'm I'm pretty nerdy. I like all sorts of stories like this. So, we got a um, we got a group of college kids, and none of them had ever played piano. Half of them, they sat them down for lessons, however many times a week, and they had them actually practice the piano, physically touch it. The other half, they never let them touch the piano. Gave them the same lessons and had them close their eyes and visualize doing the exercises. Guess which group performed better? The one that closed their eyes. They both performed the same. Oh wow! Zero difference between actually touching the piano or doing it in your mind. And the interesting thing here is, at a certain level, you do have to touch the piano because you're developing physical muscles, but at, an, at a beginner level, just to do a new skill, just visualizing it was enough. Isn't that mm, cool? That is really cool. It's kind of like uh, Guitar Hero. <laughs> are, you, are you a Guitar Hero rock star? Is that- <laughs> I remember back in the day, man. Guitar Hero was the bomb, man. Totally. Like, like, seriously, that was a cool game. Actually, I had the... The whole did, rock did band you say one with was the, a cool game. It is a cool game. It's still a cool I game. I haven't done it in a long time. Okay, but I had the whole drum, like the whole rock band one. That was really fun. The so, drums were awesome. So I actually, so I've been a musician most of my life, but I've always played guitar. I went out and bought an actual drum kit a mm-hmm. couple of years ago because I'm terrible at it, and I wanted to learn. But it, I found it was the most meditative thing I could possibly do because it takes all my concentration to play drums, and. It, it just lets you hit things really hard. Like if you're stressed, yeah. man, oh, it's, oh, so I know exactly what you're talking about when you say Guitar Hero. The, the that rock was band. a fun game, man. I remember uh, I had that, uh, I think I was 20, it was 20. Yeah, that was that was 15 years ago. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That's fun times. But anyway, um, so let me see here. Is there anything that you're doing right now that you want to highlight, promote any, any kind of events that you got going on? What's next for you? How about that? Next for me, uh, physically today, flying home to see my kids. I miss them. Like, where I, do you live? Uh, San Diego, California. Oh, okay. and, and so I, I don't, I mean, they, I, they even flew you in here, bro. Yeah, man. Day, they really don't like me. They were like, get this guy out, bring Jesse back. So, so <laughs> <laughs> I live here, bro. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> 
They can't so, be. Sometimes you just got to get on a plane and people respect you, right? In your own backyard, you're, you're, you're like, he lives here, but you get on a plane, like, oh, he must be important. Yeah, got to right? be. I, I have my own microphone, right? That's, I know. You have uh, your own stuff and know. everything. I, you so, know. so next for me, um, <laughs> I'm actually going to a real estate event next week, okay. going to a large EXP event. Um, cool. And, and then, I mean, if anyone wants to check out the real estate specific content we do, it's theagentcollective.com theagentcollective.com is and they can find me on any social platform but now I'm just gonna next for me is I'm gonna keep just uh, doing what I do right I love keep it keep connecting well you have something uh, that a lot of people are striving for it's called financial freedom I do okay you have that and so oh yeah we, we never covered that it's deep six figures by the way in residual I, mean, I can say the amount doesn't matter to me but deep six figures in residual income that's and I've been with this company for three and a half years deep six figures y'all you hear it deep six yeah. figures residual just yeah. coming on in just I go to sleep money come in I wake up money come in I go vacation money come in that's what I'm talking that about sounds like a song it should be I like it like that should be a, that, listen a new hit song money come in you know what I'm saying? I'm not doing the beat, but no. I like it. <laughs> I you saw what you're picking up. I saw play. what you're picking up there. I'm not putting it down. That's, I, I can't you do it. You should play the drums, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, he can put boxes in that. <laughs> money come in. Yeah, money come in. <laughs> well, guys, this has been a fun episode. Uh, I want you to do me a big old favor. Connect with Jesse Zagorski online. What's the best website for them to connect with you at? Uh, website's theagentcollective.com. Theagentcollective.com. Blow them up on social media. Tell them what was your favorite mic drop moment. And, uh, yeah, that's the show. It's all about who you know and a little bit of cash flow. Let's go. Thanks for listening to the Who You Know Show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show. It's all about who you know.